All right, I'm making this video because this particular set has all of the errors a person can expect to run into while still being able to salvage the content. The first thing we run into is obvious. The, the rig is posed in the very first frame of the animation in a transform that is not the rest pose. So we need to get a frame put in here, which is called a reference frame, that is the rest pose. So I'll have to move all these keys over, but I have to make sure I have all the keys. So I'll select the rig, go into pose, and A to make sure all of the bones are selected. Then A down here, put my cursor here, to make sure I have all of the keys selected. And then I can slide them over with the G key to frame two. I'll keep my cursor here on frame one. Give myself a key set. And just uh, Alt R to, and then Alt G. Now you'll notice that it moved in Alt G. That means that unfortunately the joints have been translation transformed uh, from rest posed to its animation and that can pose some issues later on when trying to string animations together. Uh, you'll have to be careful to skip frame one when exporting of course because you don't want this to go back into its rest frame. Alright so I've done that. Now I'm going to go over to the template creator and I'm going to map one of the bones which will all, which will expose another issue that you'll run into sometimes when the um, when the rig is actually parented to another object which is um, which is not a good thing for blender blender doesn't have a complete transform resolution algorithm so it doesn't know or it doesn't expose to you the fact that the rig is transformed if that if that rig is parented to another object and I'll show you why this is a problem um, did I key that It looks like the rig went. I may have not keyed. I may have not keyed the animation. Keyed the pose. I forgot to key the pose, I guess. So again, I'll make sure I select all the bones. And I do have a key set. I thought I put the key in there. No, I'm doing it wrong. Alt R, Alt G and put the key in there again, overwrites the old one. Okay, so I did that wrong the first time. I, I thought I keyed it and I didn't. Let's um, action the stage again. Now it stays there. So the first thing I want to do is I'll grab the tailbone just to show some extra features here. I will say show all bones and I know that this is the tailbone. And I guess that's connected to, oh, that looks like the root. Okay, so tailbone. I'm going to select the first bone that tail because we don't need any more. It just has one tailbone. Then select that one and map these bones. Now you'll see that this bone is really long and it, there's an obvious issue. The longer it is, the more scale there is. And Bento Buddy is able to adjust the bone length with respect to the scale of the rig, but it can't get the scale of the rig because the rig is, is parented to another object. So we have to go fix that. Uh, first thing we want to do is reset the stage here and we'll go fix this issue. To, uh, it, to make sure that it this is correct you'll look over here under the object properties relations and you'll see that it this rig 
that's selected has a parent of something else. So I'm going to remove that parent. You don't want to just delete it. You want to absorb it, absorb its transforms. And then if I do Alt P, uh, clear and keep transforms, but you'll see that we just run into a problem. So we have to, usually there's only one issue. Um, the scale itself is not an issue. We're going to scale this back down. The scale itself is not an issue. The rotation is. So now we're going to show an additional problem that we're running into. Uh, I'm going to rotate this on the X, and I know that this is clockwise, so X, I'll hit the X and then 90 because that's how it should be. But you'll notice that once I start animating, scrubbing the timeline, it will pop back into its previous rotation. And that's because the rig itself is object animated. And we don't need that. We only want joint animations. Buddy has a tool to fix this. Clean motion, remove object animation. And let's go through that process again. Alt uh, R, we do R. And we want to conform to the X and 90. Enter. And now when I scrub the timeline, it won't flip back where it was before. Uh, the other option, the other issue here, of course, is that it's scaled. And that really is not an issue. Let's just generate a rig and scale this down to something Use the rig to scale it down. Scale this down to something close to where it was before. All right, so maybe about there. You can use an original to find out where it was prior to this. Now when we go to map the bones, that long bone issue will have vanished. And I can just engage, and you'll see that the long bone is now the same size as its target. So okay, I did all the mapping on this, and you can see if I do action, which was tedious, so I'm not going to obviously include that in the video, but I'm going to show, just to finish this up, that it works in Second Life, so I'll do the conversion and retargeting. Because this is a custom rig, I'll use a different tool than the retarget motion. Uh, you would use glue if you used retarget motion. It would simulate the other tool. But with the other tool, I don't have to reset the stage. I can just delete the rig. So I'll show that other tool instead, which is um, bone control, uh, snap bones. And that just uses the map to snap the proper bones to where they belong. And this little utility here, Send to Animation, which is enabled also in the Retargeter. It sends the frame range, the active frame range, to the animation exporter. But we don't want to export the first frame in our loop. And I'm going to loop because uh, that's how I test everything. I loop. And some of your animations won't be looped because you might want to string them together. Or maybe you have certain conditions where you're using them in a HUD. But I'm going to loop mine and give it a priority of three or four and export this animation. And this will turn red. And when it's no longer red, the animation is exported. And I can just delete this rig. If you were using the retargeter instead, it would produce the same data. But um, you would reset the retargeter after you're done. And sometimes if you just delete the rig, it leaves over stuff in the scene. And even though you may have deleted the rig, there's still a dirty rig going on and you would reset the stage even on that and it would just take care of it. Some people get confused about that. So it might be better to use the other tool if, um, if it's a custom rig. And now I'm going to convert the character. Uh, I want to make a copy so I don't damage the original and if something goes wrong I can just come back to the scene instead of reload it um, and then I can map if I did a bad job at mapping convert and you see it makes a full copy of everything that it needs and I'll export the mesh here cancel and I did it did it deselect something I don't think it did export 
and then once it's done I can something happened I saw an error I saw an error and there's usually one reason for that mm, it's parented to the wrong rig let's go let's go get that error see what we got it's already converted uh, I selected the wrong conversion so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, open my recent file and I did save the map thankfully so I'm gonna load the map and then reset the retarget. Uh, Blender chose to deselect my stuff and select the mesh of the other one because even in the export menus you can accidentally deselect or select something else in the scene and we ran into that issue. Make copy, convert, export and that was the error I had so now I can just uh, delete what's selected. That's a Blender goof. Uh, I, I'm not sure they're going to change that. I'm not sure how many people run into that. But if you're in that export menu and you select, I don't know, it's it seems to be random. It doesn't, it, I can't get it to happen on purpose unless I actually click on the scene behind it. Anyway, let's go into Second Life and piece this together. I'm going to create an anchor. You don't have to, but you can't click on a skinned mesh, an animate an animesh. Yeah. You can right click and do touch. But it's inconvenient. So I'm going to create an anchor for this and it allows me to place things neatly in the box. And I will upload my material. And get the mesh. All right, so, one thing you need to remember is that the animation performed in this preview window is for humanoid subjects so you shouldn't pay too much attention to that when uploading your custom material everything seems to look right except for the arms and you might wonder oh, something's wrong but you won't know until you upload it sometimes you can tell that something's wrong even when it's a um, um, a custom rig because if you've used safe bones they should probably all be in in the place where you want them to be but if you used volume bones or attachment bones you might see some goofiness but we didn't we actually used a logical map now I'll drag this onto the box just drop it there and then I'm going to since it'll be selected I'm going to shift click the box and link it features I'll enable animesh and then all I should have to do is click the box for it to animate so it's running that leg be in the back there I guess that's I guess that's normal I and mean, he's goofy but <clears throat> that's what's in the animation we'll just go check to be sure but uh, I think that's part of the animation. Let's just make sure here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's part of it. So, no big deal. Alright, so that works. That's the end of that.